it's ready to go. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? Yes, sir. Doing all right. How are you? Can't complain, my man. Can't complain. Only people that can complain right now are Buffalo fans, which you've you've had a field day with them. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> Me? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's always a good time when uh, in Miami, even if if it's a week removed from uh, playoff elimination, when uh, when you watch the Buffalo Bills go down. So <laughs> just, just having some fun with it. No, I you you definitely had a, a lot of fun with it. That's for damn. Good. I mean, that that was uh that was good. That was good. That was good. Well, I I end up getting these these Buffalo Bills fans in my mention on X. They they follow the reporters of other teams, I guess, and they're they're always tracking whatever uh everyone else is saying about the Bills and they they want to chime in. So, hey, if uh if you want to see what what the talk is out there, then uh then you're going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm with you there and uh you know, it's uh, it's interesting now because there's uh, a lot of I call them I, I think they're kind of silly narratives because uh, you got people that want to trade for Justin Fields because of the mobile quarterback, uh, and I get it, I understand all of that, but I think what people are kind of mixing up is that some quarterbacks have to be mobile because they can't be pocket passers. And so I, I'm just I, I think it's more about the Dolphins dedicating themselves more to the run than they have. Actually, they did a little bit better this year than they did last year, but still they didn't go all the way. Whereas you see some of these other guys out around the league, they're getting heavy support from the running game. To me, that's the missing ingredient besides the tight end, besides the short passing game. Something, by the way, that was also very prevalent in the playoff games. It wasn't only running. It was a short passing game that a lot of quarterbacks will use a lot. It's the tight end. These are things that you're watching elements. It's not so much the one person that's missing that skill set. No, it's your team that's missing certain elements. Would you look at it that way? Yeah, and uh, this is a topic that uh, came up on our Sun Sentinel program. Um, uh, I was discussing with with Perk, and uh, it's and so this is the the time of the year where with the Dolphins eliminated. I remember this really being a big deal in the 2021 postseason. That's January of 22 when you're watching Joe Burrow make his run uh, to the Super Bowl through the AFC. Patrick Mahomes, of course, is there, and you know Lamar Jackson is in the AFC. You know Josh Allen. It's it, it just it's a very talented quarterback heavy uh, conference, not so much like the NFC where Brock Purdy can lead the number one team and um, now who, who is still a fine quarterback, but, you know, not a guy capable of doing all the things that we see from whether it's Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, et cetera, uh, Joe Burrow when he's healthy, um, and Jared Goff is the other uh, quarterback right now in the NFC Championship game. But this is the time of the year where then you, you start looking at all those quarterbacks in the playoff games and say – Boy, the Dolphins don't have that. Uh, and, and you look at a lot of the mobility and Josh Allen uh, just uh, rambling downhill, uh, rumbling downhill for, for big gains. And uh, But Tua is a different quarterback, and that's okay. It's not like he needs to win by the same way that Lamar Jackson does and that you need to have those same tools. Tua will, will win with the what, what quarterbacks coach Daryl Bevel called his four superpowers – the accuracy, anticipation, the timing, and the vision. So that's his game. So you maximize on what you have with him playing his game, and you have a really talented wide receiver duo. Yes, they need to get over some drops, and they have their faults too, and the system still needs to – uh, get over some humps and uh, incorporate the run game. Mike McDaniel needs to become a, a better to play call. Got to get a playmaking tight end, bro. Big time. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You know, so, that, that, right? You add up all, all those things, and yeah, you, you, you want to see it all come together, but that doesn't mean that the quarterback has to go and win the game on his own with his legs. Um, and he's not, he doesn't have the big arm that Josh Allen, Justin Herbert have. He's even admitted as much the times that he's gone up against them this past season. Uh, when asked about the other quarterback, he said, Man, it's really impressive some of the things they do, and I'm just a different quarterback, he would say. Uh, so 
he's the guy you have. You could you could win with the way that he quarterbacks the game. Um, it doesn't mean you have to match the opposing quarterback stride for stride with big gains on the ground with the big arm. And he, even he had a lot of uh, downfield throws as well. So uh, this was probably the biggest season that we've had with him throwing the deep ball, uh, hitting Tyreek Hill so many times, hitting Jalen Waddle at one time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just to, to me, that's kind of what I notice out of all of this is that McDaniel needs to add more balance to it. I predict they will get a playmaking tight end uh, this offseason. They, they tried the last two years to get it. Uh, it's a missing ingredient in their offense. I, I definitely think uh, they're uh, they're they're going to get that guy. The other thing that I've been saying for a couple of weeks now but I keep hearing people talk about it, write about it, or maybe even say it on radio or television that uh, Christian Wilkins will get a long-term deal or will get tagged. I say he will get neither. Christian Wilkins will price himself right the hell off this team, and he's not coming back. What's your prediction with Christian Wilkins? See, I, I started to break down, even go deeper into the cap situation and, and what needs to happen. And, of course, the Dolphins want to keep a core together. And I, I'm starting to feel like the Dolphins are going to end up giving him the contract, and it's going to be a deal that's backloaded. It's friendly at the beginning so that they could get under the cap this year, put all their hopes into, into this season. Maybe it's a window that goes this year and next year. And then after that, you're just going to pile on all those cap uh, liabilities that this team is, is going to have. And uh, and really, it's going to come down to this short-term window. So I'm feeling like, yeah, Christian Wilkins is going to have to get his money. And he he bet on himself by not taking what the Dolphins offered uh, last offseason, going into training camp when he held out of team portions of practice. Uh, what he needed to prove was that he could provide an interior pass rush. He got nine sacks this year. So he bet on himself. Uh, basically, he won. Sure, he could stand to do a lot better come the big games because he didn't show up that way in those bigger games, and he piled on some sacks against some of the lesser competition. That's kind of the story of the whole team, really. Uh, but, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, he, he decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to take that deal because I feel I'm worth more. I'm going to prove to you that I can provide the interior pass rush. And what, what pays is sacks, and he ended up with nine of them. So now – Yesterday's price is not today's price when it comes to Christian Wilkins because of that. Yeah, uh, from what I'm told, he wanted you know some close to Quentin Williams money last year, and with the nine sacks, I think he's going to want more. I think he's priced out. So we shall we shall see. You think he plays here in the 2024 season? I say no. It's going to be burdensome, but it, I, I feel like it's going to be a contract that's structured where okay, it's a, an extension. We can handle it under the cap now. We'll worry about next year and the years that come after that. We already know we're piling on all these restructured deals, the cap hits over uh, several years, and it, and that it's going to be May Day come those future seasons. But we'll worry about that time when that time comes. They really want – I feel like they want to keep this core together. And a big deal in that is keeping the guy that was that foundational first-round pick when you started the rebuild, 2019 draft, and he was a guy that he's been reliable. Hasn't We talk about all these other guys that are injury prone. He's always been there for you. And then he added on the pass rush in this game. And he's a big locker room guy. Um, he's got a lot of fans within that front office uh, of him and his uh, his routine and the way he goes about things. So I feel at the end of the day, the Dolphins, if they want to compete, and they're going to have to bite the bullet and decide uh, we, we're not going to get better by diminishing something that we were already strong at. Yeah, I got you there. All right. Uh, Mark Smith is asking, what happens with Armstead's contract if he retires? I don't think he's retiring. I think that's just, you know, end of the season, you know, stuff that you're frustrated and all that. Do we lose Wilkins? We answered that one for you. He thinks he stays. I say he's gone. And X this offseason. Uh, definitely X is gone. You agree with that one, right? X is gone. There's, I there's have him no as, as that, that post June one uh yeah. cut that yeah right. that can then help you sign the draft class if you just hold on a bit in in uh, dishing out that money. So yeah. What do you think happens with Armstead? 
Armstead, I mean, I think he'll come back. Uh, he'll he'll contemplate. He's coming off the season where, uh, like every other one, he's dealt with a bunch of injuries. So I think he does indeed come back. As far as what happens, I mean, the Dolphins will still owe him uh, money because of uh, how it was already restructured. So um, that, from, from my understanding, uh, it's, it's beneficial that he does come back because you're already uh, essentially going to be paying him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From what I understand, uh, yeah, no, it, it's – it's another year where you might have an opportunity to get out of it. Another year or two, I think it is, with Armstead. This year is not the offseason you want to get out because then it's going to cripple you. If if he retires or you would cut him or whatever, it would be cap crippling. So you've got you've got to hold off and you got to hope that he plays. Actually, you got to hope that he stays at least another year. To be quite honest, the way things are restructured, and you've guaranteed some money, right? I think it was. That's what you said, right? Guarantee, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then you, and then you just hope that he gives you those, whatever it'll be, ten games, eleven games. You, you know what you're going to get out of him, and you have to have that backup plan. Kendall Lamb was serviceable. Well, that you got to bring, back, bro. You gotta bring back Kendall Lamb. I mean, he's he's vital. He's vital to this team. Yeah, yeah, Kendall Lamb and Liam Eikenberg. OK, because I see, here's my problem. I know people were down on Liam. I, I'm I, I'm super confident now in Liam. I thought he did a good job on one leg overall, and he was learning a new position. And I thought he got better at it, even injured and everything. He comes back next year and he's healthy. He'll be a key backup. And the next time Liam Eikenberg gets a gets a chance to start, my prediction is he keeps the job. I don't know where you put him. Wherever you put him, he will be your starter the next time around. I think Liam Eikenberg has turned the corner physically, mentally. I think he's ready to become a consistent lineman. And here's another thing. If you're able to bring back Connor Williams on a team-friendly deal because he's coming off the injury, uh, he, he won't be ready for the start of the season uh, in all likelihood. So you're going to need a center to start uh, before Williams comes back. And then who knows how Williams plays once he does come back, if right. all that plays out where he comes back and everything. Um, so, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll possibly just need him at center or uh, maybe uh, left guard if uh, if uh, if Williams does – if it does play out where Williams uh, comes back on a, on a lighter deal because of the injury and makes a midseason return or whatever it is, maybe left guard is where Liam can slide in. And then you, you figure out what you're doing with Robert Hunt. He's probably going to command a – a significant salary. So if you want to bring him back, who I think will be somewhat of a priority for this team, if they can, um, then if not, then Liam could possibly slide in at right guard too. Yeah. I'm with you there. Um, dude, what's going on with Danny Crossman? Like, why is he still here? <laughs> this is what happened last year too, where uh, everyone was expecting it to come down and then it just did not, and uh, weeks and weeks went by, and everyone just kind of figured, okay, I guess he's staying. And then uh, you, you come down to their returning the field for the offseason organized activities, and and Danny Crossman um, is is retained. So uh, this is interesting. We're a week out, uh, so there haven't been any coaching staff changes. Last year it occurred after the Dolphins were eliminated on a Sunday 1 p.m. game. Uh, the the first uh, wave of moves occurred on the Thursday that followed. So based on that timeline, something should have happened already. Um, just based on Mike McDaniel's timeline of, okay, the first thing he does is he does all his exit interviews with his players. Then he decompresses, figures out where he is, has talks with the assistant coaches. And then you notice, okay, Josh Boyer and a few others went down last year, four days out. And now it's been more than a week. It was uh, Saturday of last week, and so still nothing. So it is intriguing. Um, I know Danny Crossman in his last uh, interview, he sort of uh, pegged the uh, the kickoff return and punt return averages that were that ranked highly for the Dolphins before the long kickoff return uh, against the Baltimore Ravens in Week 17, and then before and the punt return average before the one the touchdown that they gave up against Buffalo, but. Those things still happened and really turned those two games uh, sideways. The Ravens game, they it was going to be really hard to come back after that one. And the Buffalo game, obviously you're leading the fourth quarter at home, and then that one uh, goes awry from that point. So 
Um, those were big deals. He did have a, a good season out of Jason Sanders. Uh, you know, Bailey was was up and down, had his moments, but uh, not great as a punter. And then uh, Braxton Berrios is a solid return guy. If I'm just analyzing all the different aspects, but the key thing is is probably those returns, the the coverage units, and um, that, that really they failed this team late in the year. Granted, there were a lot of injuries that occurred, slid different guys into whether it's safeties and linebackers that were big special teamers having to play defense. So those uh, those units were altered heavily. Maybe Mike McDaniel's looking at that as something as a saving grace for Crossman. But yes, uh, you know, still uh, no movement there. Yeah, uh, and for that guy asking uh, on Vic, Vic Fangio's gonna. Uh, it's up to Vic Fangio if he wants to come back. From what I heard, they're gonna they're gonna talk to all the the coaches this week. They'll get all that hammered out by by all of this week. So I would expect Vic Fangio to come back. I don't expect him to leave. Although knowing that Phillips and Chubb are going to be out for a bit and, you know, if he doesn't like the way McDaniel was coaching, then maybe he could decide, yeah, you know what? It's time for me to turn it in, but he's getting four and a half million. I just have a hard time seeing him walk away from that. Yeah. People don't just uh, walk away from that, but yeah, there's, there's other factors. Like you said, if he doesn't like the way the defense is looking, if, um, uh, now I think there's rules against like a lateral move, but I mean, the Eagles defensive coordinator job has opened up. So, but, uh, I think if he's here, then Dolphins don't, ha don't have to worry about that. I I'd have to look into it to be sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so it it'd be tough to just walk away from, from 4 million. Uh, but yeah, there are some factors that may make him say, boy, I'm just sick of this thing. I, I, it, it was a lot nicer when, when I was, uh, taking that sabbatical last year and I, I didn't have to deal with uh, uh, figuring out who my pass rushers are going to be uh, on a, on a week's notice, and um, you know Jalen Ramsey um, on me all the time about uh, not allowing him to to uh, follow a, a top receiver, which probably is something is an adjustment he should have made more often. So that that part is probably on him. Um, and also another thing I was thinking of is he doesn't end up very uh, involved in uh, in the discussions for adding a a player on the defensive side, like, like every Thursday, whenever we asked him, okay, so uh, if, if they added, let's say like the most recent examples, Justin Houston and, and Bruce Irvin, you know, uh, what, what were your conversations like with Chris Greer over them? And he, he would say, oh, I mean, I, I was no part of that. I wasn't involved. He, Chris just decided. And so well, I got, I got it. I'm going to call bullshit on that. Okay. Okay, uh, he does approve. I'm not saying he approved the old men that came in lately, but he approves. They ask him about players they bring in. Yes, they do. They do ask him. Now, Bruce Irvin and Justin Houston at the end of this, and it, dude, that was for one week. What, whatever is out there, they had to just sign whatever was out there. So yeah. that part, yeah, I could see him not having a lot of input. Because whatever is out there, you're you're getting the dregs of the NFL left over for one week. So he couldn't get too picky. But before that, I can tell you that they do run it by him. Okay. 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 Yeah. They yeah. Run. There David were other Lawson. examples earlier in the season. I can't recall uh, what it was exactly, but where where we heard him say that, and it seemed like just every time, um, I, th I think like Melvin Ingram is another one, but he was also sort of end of the year pick him up type of guy um, where it, he, at least what he said in, inclined you to believe he wasn't as involved, but I mean, he's got to be at some level to some that, level. That, that might be true on the, on the last couple of pickups of the old men that, that okay. I, I can see that because at that point it's like, Chris, find whatever you can find, you know, what we run. And you know, that there isn't at this point, there can't be too much discussion of, Oh no, I want this guy, that guy, this, you know, th there can't be much, but, Earlier in the season, he and in the off season, the draft and all that, he's he's well informed of what they're doing. Right, the okay. Cam Smith pick. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, he's all yeah. They're not just picking Cam Smith uh, without uh, checking with with Vic Banjo if he can fit into into the system. Of course, yes. So I I know that he approves stuff for sure. That I can tell you. I know for a fact. Now he might have been telling you the truth at the end. That that 
I can see that because what's left at the end of a season? There's nothing. All right, uh, what do you got going on the Sentinel so uh, folks can check you out, my friend? All right, big uh, big cap breakdown that I'm uh, trying to finalize here once I get off. Um, so figuring out all the moves, some of which we we've discussed that Dolphins can do. What uh, what uh, may be more inclined for them to do as they operate right now, present day, 52 million over the cap, but that number can easily be um, be flipped around and uh, get this team flexible again, and uh, and then probably just uh, roll out a couple of. Um, some of the leftover interviews I did on Lacquer Cleanout Day, players lower on the roster, um, and uh, that uh, and in their situation going into next year. One of which uh, Anthony Schwartz, uh, a local kid that um, was signed to a futures contract, so I'll probably run that one uh, this week. Dude, you need to do a story on Tanner Connor and Braylon. Oh, yes, Sanders. you mentioned this. Yeah, but both Bra- Tanner Connor and Braylon Sanders, those two guys went four years of fratting in college. And now they're going to their third third year of fratting on an NFL team. Those guys are my heroes. Okay. <laughs> my heroes. All right. I you know, well, semi hero. The other one is the guy that just signed with the University of Miami for his ninth year <laughs> of eligibility. That's how I want to go after a degree. Nine years just hanging out in college, you know, forever. That there that's that's life right there. That guy nine years he must have like 87 degrees at this point. <laughs> freaking my, awesome. my, my first year of college uh that that song uh by this uh, i think he was a one-hit wonder this guy asher roth i love college came out and i think the cam mccormick is, for um is the prototype of that he that guy loves college to the utmost he just he never wants to leave. Uh, so nine years. Hey, credit to him. I mean, that is half the lifetime of the incoming freshman class. Nine years. Yeah, yeah. No, the guy's gonna graduate and then just become a teacher. He'll just become a professor because he's got to have like a double masters or some shit like that. I don't even know if that exists, but he's probably got a double masters at this. He's probably teaching the teachers to teach the kids <laughs> probably what, what McCormick is doing, you know, at this point. So you got to do a, a story on Braylon Sanders and Tanner Connor. These guys are about to ride their third year of the gravy train in the NFL. That my friend is that, that, that McCormick at UM, he's got, he's probably got graduate assistants that oh, coach yeah. him that are younger than him. Yeah, <laughs> and, and there's probably five year NFL veterans that are younger than him. At this point, McCormick is getting an AARP card when he's done. That's, that's how long he's been in college. Okay. Uh, by the way, I got to let you go with this. Tua gets his contract this offseason, doesn't he? Well, and uh, here's another thing with the with the cap is just cap story, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just it would be beneficial for this year's cap situation if you go ahead and do that. So uh, maybe now, hopefully they can uh, find a number that the Dolphins like as far as the long-term deal. So they're not tied to him at a huge number that, um, you know, right now he hasn't performed to the level of uh, deserving the 50 million that we've seen some other teams dish out. Uh, so, you know, if, if it's in the next tier, then, then sure, you know, a, a tier one tier or two below it, if it's in the lower to mid forties, um, you know, then you know, you might as well go for it because you're in a win now mode anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, it's gonna happen. I I believe he will he will get his contract, and it'll be probably somewhere in the forty five to fifty range. And people will end up complaining because they'll pay him, and then it's kind of a foreshadowing what's coming. Oh, well, he'll become and he'll turn the corner and he'll win, and none of you will complain about his money later on and all that kind of crap. It's it's kind of that kind of, that 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 type. Yeah, it's of only going to be bigger contracts. They get dished out later. So, um, yeah. yes, in a few years, if Tua does pan out, and 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 really, if he continues to just produce at the the numbers that he already is putting up, but just better in late game scenarios, handling pressure uh, against the top teams, all those things, then if it's a reasonable number like that, you'll look at it years down the road and say, oh well, the Dolphins got off pretty well. But he's got to put all that together too. Yeah, yeah, it'll help if he has a coach that actually knows what the hell he's doing to kind of help set him up. But, you know, we'll see if McDaniel can figure it out this uh, this coming season because uh, if not, the Heat's going to turn up big time on him by the end of next season if he doesn't figure it out. All right, follow him on Twitter 
at David Faronis underscore. And of course, catch his work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. David, as always, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you immensely. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Welton Rayom, proud sponsor of our program. I'm excited for them. They're about to get some new offices. Yeah, baby. 954-966-4646. Bankruptcy, homeowner property damage, condo damage, criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury. Save this number. Okay? You may not need it now, but some pipe might break. And all of a sudden, you got water damage. Before you call the insurance companies, you call Welton Rayom. They have their own adjusters. They will straighten out those insurance companies like they did for us. That progressive was way out of line. And Welton Rayom straightened them out in a big-time way. So call them. You don't call the insurance companies. You call Welton Rayom first. They will call the insurance company for you. And when the insurance company is getting the call immediately from a lawyer, and not from you and me. <laughs> brother, brothers and sisters, they, uh, they you get their attention right away because they know that the person on the other side of that line knows all the laws and all the loopholes, something you and I are not well versed in. That's why they smoke us. That's why they run circles around us because we're big dummies. We don't know all the laws, all the loopholes. They do. But when they're dealing with Welton Realm, they're at a disadvantage. And that's what you want. You want to put the insurance companies at a disadvantage. Welton Realm will do that. You and I call, they're at the advantage. And we're at the disadvantage. Because we, we don't have our tackles. Welt and Realm. The left and right tackle that you need consultation is completely free something happened to you a week ago a month ago six months ago a year ago maybe statute of limitations hasn't run out you don't even know if you have a case call welton room ask for jeff welt right now 